Hello, welcome to a new edition of Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where I'm going to be looking at this uh, very interesting uh, pencil puzzle from Japan called Compass. Um, now we've done one video on this puzzle type before, um, so I'll just I'll put a, a something on the screen where you can click on that and revisit that if you want to remind yourself of the rules, because I suspect this is going to be quite a difficult puzzle. We've had a request to solve this puzzle from somebody who has solved it but said they found it very very difficult and they wondered whether we had any ideas about how to how to do it without guessing um, so I'm going to look at that in a moment just to mention as well that for those of you who are patrons of the channel on Patreon obviously thank you very much for that and we've just uh, released our July reward puzzle uh, to you guys um, so that's going to be um, uh, that's now available on Patreon um, and there's a video going up on how to solve the puzzle as well later today. Now this month's reward puzzle is really stellar so if you uh, if any of you could consider who aren't patrons would consider uh, sponsoring us that would be massively appreciated. It's two dollars a month um, for that you get access to the um, uh, our special puzzle uh, each month and for three dollars a month you get access to a video on how to solve it as well so um, we think it's quite good value and we you know it helps to support us in what we're doing. Now, let's take a look at today's puzzle. If you want to have a go at it yourself interactively, do click on the link under the video. It'll take you to our software. You'll see exactly what I'm seeing here. A quick reminder of the rules. Um, we know that each of these squares we consider to be clues, and we need to fill the grid using only these four clues. And when I say fill the grid, I mean divide it into areas where each cell in the grid attaches to one of the clues. There are only four clues, so we know that we need to basically divide this grid into four areas. And each of these clues has some conditions. So if we look at this one, for example, this is saying that the area that this clue relates to contains no cells to the left-hand side of it, two cells to the north of it, five cells to the east, and three cells to the south. Um, and somehow we need to divide this grid in a way uniquely just using these conditions. So let me, I'm going to talk you through my thought process as I think about how to do this. Hopefully the video won't be too long. Um, so the first thing I note, I suppose, is that this south part of this, this clue is not filled and the north part of this clue is not filled, so they could be any number at all. And the grid is 8 by 8, so that's 64 cells in total. I'm just going to quickly add up the, the known numbers to see what number we get to. So we've got 10 here, 21, 60, 69. Okay, so mm, that's not going to be, I don't think that's going to be very useful. That tells us that sort of 5. You know, if, for example, this square here, clue attached to this square, you can see that's using two of the digits because it's, it's, this is north of this cell and it's east of this cell. So we've got 69 clues from these numbers, which means there's obviously some overlap, but the problem is these, these unknown numbers here don't really allow us to use or to make progress using that logic. So what next? Well, what, sometimes what I do with these puzzles is I try and identify parts of the grid that can't be reached by many of the clues. So let's do that. Let's see if there's anything obvious. This cell, obviously, can't be reached by the clue that's next to it because of this zero. So let's just make that green for a moment. Let's think about... Actually, this, this cell is better. This cell on the top, because, because of the zero here, this clue cannot reach this cell, but also this clue, which has a one north, cannot reach this cell, because obviously to reach this cell would require two cells attaching to this square that, that are north of it. So, right, so now we've, we've established something. This square attaches to this square. We don't know how, but we know that must be true. Now, are there any other weak cells in the puzzle? I'm tempted to go right over here. 
yeah in fact let's do that this cell is also a weak point isn't it because obviously for the same reason as this cell it can't connect here it can't connect to this one because that's this cell can only go or this clue can only go five cells eastwards one two three four five so it's never going to reach anything in column eight of the grid so, and obviously this cell can only have two cells north of it so this cell is also green I suspect if we think about how this green cell attaches to this green cell is it ever the case that this these green cells connect to one another across the top it's clearly not because because of the two here we know that this cell attaches to two friends above it so actually the only way these two connect is if this cell comes downwards otherwise it's always gonna cut off this square and I'm not sure how useful that is yet but it, I think it's forced I think these two must be green let's come back to that um, I want to look at this square because of the zero in this box so uh, the problem is that this square here this this clue could come down any number in fact this corner is a, it's a bit similar to this corner is probably the weak, weakest point because this can attach to this or this this two here means this could come down and come across like that I guess or this could be coming and joining up somehow ah but ha 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 let's ask let's look at this this clue in more detail once we know this square is not attached to this. Let's make this a different color to make that clear. How do we fill this two and this three in this box? We know that there must be three cells to the east of this clue that form part of the blue area. Now this could be one of them, that's for sure that's true, but any other cell other than this one that is to the east of this cell is also north of it that is absolutely forced so in fact this cell is must be part of the blue cell and then these two cells also must be part of it because otherwise this two and this three just cannot work and that that is beautiful because now how do we fill the four we can't go above because we've had to use the north cells in order to fill the east cell criteria. So the only way is like that. So we manage to find a little bit of progress all of a sudden. These cells now all must be connected because so we're going to have to join them up to this one or to this. Ah, well, this one's not, not, not possible anymore because this cell can only go eight west of it one two three four five six seven and I can never get back to this square so in fact these cells are green oh and hang on this is an eight one one two three four five six seven so this this square is not in this shape because I need I need one more um, so that's going to have to be green in order to get me back to this square. If I make this green, I can never then go upwards from it without breaching the 8 condition. So these two square, in fact these three squares are some other colour. I don't know what colour yet. Um, probably, yeah. They're, they're going to have to be connected to this one. Because this can only have three squares south of it. 
I do love these problems. They are so elegant. Whoever creates these puzzles has some sort of weird genius about them. So now, so now I've done the eight part of this. I've got three of the nines. And I know this square and this square, or this area and this area connect. And we've got three here, four when I do that one. So now I have, so now these four cells must be purple because if they aren't, if I start meandering up here with purple cells, I can never actually get back close enough to this clue here. So this has to come like this and can never rise above this line. So these are now green, so I know this green must connect to this, these other two greens in some way. This can't come up. If this purple comes up, it breaches the eight condition. We've already got eight cells now to the west of this square. So actually this comes like this. These are green. And now this must connect this way. Wow. Now. Well, this square, this square can't be purple, so it must be green. And we've only got, in fact, this one and this two to complete here. Now, we could go like this, but you can see if we did, although that does meet the conditions for the purple area, this green area now cannot connect to its friends. So we need to find another way of making this purple work. Going, And the only way is going to be like that, isn't it? That's going to be the only possibility because I need to sort of use one of these clues um, twice on a single cell in order to allow this green area to come round. So now it can come round. This purple area is filled, the blue area is filled, and the rest of it, the, all of the white squares, must be divided somehow between the green area and this area that I haven't made a colour yet. Let's make this red. Right. So, how can we do this? Well, I suppose the most obvious thing we can do is all of these must be green <laughs> because of the zero condition here. So let's put those in. And the next thing we can do is we've noted that the green area does not connect to its friend across the top because if it did there would be no way any of these cells could be red. Uh, you know if I tried to make this cell red and to connect the green areas over the top of this cell, that's, n oh, hang on, I'm sorry. If I make that red and then try and make these cells green, for example, like that, you can see this red area can never connect to its friend here. So we know that this green area is connecting to this green area underneath this area here. So for the same reason, none of these cells on the perimeter of the white area could ever be red. If I try and make this square red, we now know this red and this red must connect somehow. So however we do that, we're preventing the green area from connecting to its friends underneath, which we know is impossible. So actually, all of the perimeter squares here must be green. And now let's just count how many cells we've got to the right of this 22. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So we've, so we've done it in fact. We've got 22 green cells to the right hand side of this clue. So all of these squares must be red. And, ah, and now I need three cells to the south of this area. They're going to have to be red. And now I've got 
I think I've done the, the red area now. I've got five cells to the right, three cells below, two cells above. These cells are green. They don't breach any condition of the green area. And this, I think, is the solution to the puzzle. So that is how to solve it logically. Um, now, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's a bit different from Sudoku, but some of these um, pencil puzzles um, are really, really worth looking at. Um, they stretch your mind in different ways. And as I say, I hope you enjoyed it. And we'll be back soon with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.